This is one-on-one -on, -one on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for watching. My name is Elsie Godwin. On this episode, we are one-on-one -on -one with Bami Dele Onolaja. Mr. Onolaja is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at Revolution Plus Property Development Company Limited. He was awarded the Real Estate Entrepreneur of the Year at the Real Estate Excellence Awards organized by Better Media Limited. He was also awarded the Real Estate Personality of the Year Award at the 2019 City People Magazine Awards. He is the founder of the Chris Bamidele Onolaja Foundation, which empowers widows yearly, provide child and maternal health, economic empowerment, free scholarship, and also runs a full-fledged private um, Nigerian primary school in Ikorodu, fully free to educate less privileged children whose parents cannot afford a private school in that access. Also, giving scholarships to students up to university level. Hi, Mr. Onolaja. Hi. I mean, that's part of your, I mean, your, your profile is huge, but that part is definitely warming um, the heart. What led you to deciding to start this type of foundation? Having a school is not an easy fit, and now making it free. What is the drive behind this? Um, well, so many things. Me and my wife, uh, co-founders of the Trump Foundation. Okay. Um, we've gone through so much. Growing up, I grew up from a family of ten, and I have the opportunity, out of so many of my key family, uh, of my children, my dad's family, to go to university. We are very few that have such opportunity among ten of us. So, um, and I grew up where it's not that there's so much money. So I know what poverty is. Hmm. I know what struggling is. I've felt it, I've seen it, and God blessed me to be a blessing to the world. So when God gave me the opportunity to have opportunity to help people, so many people want to have good quality education for their children, but they don't have the ability to. So me and my wife came together on my 40th, 50th birthday um, to found the Chris Bamdi Leonardia Foundation. Mm. So what we do every year is to empower widows. On my wife's 40th birthday just this year, we empowered 40 widows. Mm. We also empower schools. Apart from our private school, free school, we have other schools that we also support. So the school is a free flesh school at Ikorodu. It's free school, free feeding, free books, free bags. Everything is free. Free tuition. You don't pay one naira. So how, how do you fund this um, free this education? Because yeah, we, we, people will tell you good education does not come cheap. Yeah, it's true. So how do you fund this? Um, we fund education from our personal pockets, personally. In fact, let me tell you, there's COVID. They, they've not been in school for it, but we've been paying the teachers. Hmm. We pay them 50% of their salary. They pray for us every day. But so many private schools cannot pay. But we've been paying, despite that the school is free, we pay them every month. So do you have a limit of um, or number of children that should or can enroll in the school part time? Yes, we do. Because the school is big, but okay. not very big. Mm -hmm. So we, when we started, we started last year, yes, we started 50 children. Now, the 50 children are progressing. You know, when you progress, move to maybe just, uh, primary one, primary two, other children have to fill. So we have increased it to like 70. Mm. So we have a projection of increasing maybe adding 10, 10 people or 10, 10 children or 20, 20 children every session. That's the plan. Wow. Because in the area, we chose Ikorodu because um, that particular area where the school is, is a low income enhanced area. Mm -hmm. And we have a property there. So that was okay. We converted the property to free school. It has full flood library, ICT center. It has a canteen. It has um, where children can sleep because we have babies, where they can sleep and wake up. Is it has a sick bay? Hmm. So, is so aside um, being able to pay um, the teachers even during this um, lockdown and the pandemic, have you been able to incorporate any form of online learning for the yes students? for the children? The yeah. school, the children are right now. They we do online learning, mm -hmm. which. So many private schools are charging, but we don't charge, it's free. Mm. And how has the capacity been, actually, in regards to them having the gadgets? Yes, the, that, that's end. where the problem is, because number one, one of the best ways to learn in Nigeria now is mm -hmm. physical. You have to be in the school. So because so many things are deterrent and affecting this online thing, data, for instance, 
is a major thing because, like I said, it's a free school. Their parents don't have money, to, so not to talk about buying data. So what we do, we have like a center in each of the area, like five, five children come, you learn. The teacher teaches you from his house. He learn, we project it. We have a, maybe a laptop. So that's, we broke it. But even at that, it's not really, they are not feeling it because mm. they are not used to such. Mm. So it's like a new thing. We are trying to push them. And you know, this IT, IT is very expensive. Yeah, it is. It is very, okay. very expensive. So um, the Chris Bamindele Onolaja Foundation focuses on the widows. Yes, we have four, um, four okay. major areas of focus. Okay. Child and maternal health. Mm -hmm. That means we cater, we cater for pregnant women, we cater for children, which is part of what we are doing. Mm -hmm. So we are we have focus of in building hospitals, mm -hmm. free maternal hospital for pregnant women. We employing doctors and nurses, we pay them 100% and it's free. Once you are pregnant, you want to come there, you won't pay anything. So is there is there a personal experience that you'd want to share that actually decided the areas that you have chosen um, for your foundation? Yes, personal experience and because of the club where I belong, I'm a Rotarian. I belong to the Rotary Club of Maryland, which is part of the Rotary December 10 in Lagos and Ogun State. So the Rotary, Rotary Club, has like six major area of focus. So we just chose four mm -hmm. out of it because those four are very germane and important to our experience as my, me and my wife, as the founders of the foundation. Because child and maternal health, mortality rate to ratio for children being born is very high in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And also scholarship. People want to go to school, but they don't have the money. Economic empower, which is what we do. We empower widows every year. So it is very, very important. So those are things we think are very common among the society. That's why we chose those four. Hmm, I must say I'm impressed. I mean, what you're doing is amazing, but it doesn't come cheap. So let's because. talk about you and what you do, because you've said you fund this foundation. So we're talking hospitality, we're talking education, yeah. we're talking health, we're talking everything that can make the life of the poor uh, man better. So how... What is your business exactly? Everybody says real estate, <laughs> but tell me, what is your business? Well, um, Bamdela Nolaja is the chief executive officer of Revolution Plus Property. My wife is the executive director, so me and my wife work together. So many people ask me, how do you work with a wife? For me, we've been doing this for six years. So because I'm an ex-banker, I was a mortgage banker for 13 years. After I left banking, I founded Revolution Plus with my wife. And we've been running it together. And I can say that's the best help I've gotten from anybody. Nobody can do that business like my wife, I'm telling you. Mm. So I'm mean, a kind of a different man that see it differently the way other men see it. So men cannot work with my wife, but for me, I have nothing to hide. She knows my income, she sees the money, she sees everything, and I'm better for it because she's a woman, a proper finance manager. Mm. She's been, she has helped me develop in mm -hmm. my finances so much. So. By Raw Revolution Plus Property. Revolution Plus Property started just six years ago. Um, so many people will think, ah, I thought you are 20 years. No, we are not. We are just six. Uh, but we have Grace that's working with us. We have Grace. And despite that six years, we have been able to have over 30 estates, about 35 estates right now, and still counting. We have opened branches in Lekki, Ikeja. We have in Abekuta. We have in Ibadan. We have in Abuja and Portacourt. Mm. So we have expanded over the years into, into a global brand. And also, we have another very big branch also in Dallas, Texas. We are mm. registered with the U.S. government at Revolution Plus Property. Mm. So we are doing so much. So what we are focused on Revolution Plus is to provide affordable housing for all. Because as a, when I was working in the mortgage bank, I got exposed to loans, mortgages, so I know what mortgages. I know what people go through to get mortgages. Mm -hmm. I know what deformity. You know, they you give them money, they don't pay. So I know what the banks go through also. So when I started this company, I said, no, what I want to do is affordable housing. You can pay more interest free over 24 months, mm -hmm. over three years. We have new la young landlord promo, which is for children. Five years interest free for children. So and it's been very very welcome. So so many people, and we have affordable land and houses. So people are taking advantage of it. 
What's the business model of Revolution Plus, aside how people are able to acquire? Now, how, how do you get finances and how do you ensure that your bottom line remains safe? Especially with the fact that this is the same place that funds the foundation. So what is the business model of Revolution Plus, including the grace of God as well, like you mentioned, that has um, made the business grow, this, have this massive growth in the space of six months? Six years. Sorry, six years. Thank you. Uh, well, firstly, I recognize God's grace. That's mm -hmm. the first thing and foremost I tell everybody. I don't know how he grew this big. Also, having worked in the bank, I learned processes and procedures. Because I worked 13 years in a corporate organization. Even my wife worked in a corporate organization before both of us resigned and started the company. When I started the company, two years after my wife joined, she was still working. So I learned procedures and processes of how to do bookkeeping, marketing. We are well branded as a company. We have ties, we have jackets, we have what we wear, you know, and we, are, we do so much adverts. Those are the things I learned when I was working. We have, if you come to Revolution Plus, you will think it's a bank, because we have, you, people are saying, is it more than house that you people are selling? I tell them, yes, because number one, I'm leaving a legacy mm -hmm. that will outlift me. It's not, it's, this is not a one-man business. It has even grown beyond me and my family. It has gone global because now we have people that work for, we have over 5,000 staffs. Some of them full staff, some of them realtors. They do, they sell for us. They don't resume in the office, but that is the only thing they do because they only sell for us and they make their daily income from sales of our properties. So. Because of those ones, we have grew and we are supporting them to make sure that they succeed. So such business cannot be about you. Mm. Because if anything happens to me now, I'm very, very sure and certain that the business will continue, which I'm sure I will live a beyond 100 years. All right, let's go for a very quick break. But when we come back, we'll carry on this conversation with Mr. Nolaja. <music> Welcome back. This is still 101 on Plus TV Africa. And with me is Mr. Bami Dele Onolaja, the MD CEO of Revolution Plus. Thank you for still staying here with us. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about um, building collapse because you talked about the properties you're developing in different parts of the world, not just Nigeria right now. Why do we have cases of building collapses in Nigeria? And why do we keep having this sort of issue? So many things, so many reasons. Um, Build, I'll call it control. So many developers and so many people building don't go through the right processes mm -hmm. because number one, for you to construct from even a bungalow and from a one-story building, there are approvals for it to be gotten from the government or from the local government. So, so many people don't wait for such approval to come out because in the approval, there are several things to consider when you're building, when you're constructing. Beyond the architectural drawing, most what people know is, ah, this building is looking so beautiful. But beyond that building, you have to do the structural test, the structural drawing. You have to do the M&E, mechanical, electrical. So many things are involved to make your building come up. But when you submit those approvals, and maybe while the government is doing some corrections on the drawing you submit, people go to sites and they start constructing. And also on the part of the government, the approval process is too slow. So you can imagine you put it in the, for approval three, six months, and there's time value of money. Maybe you borrowed money from the bank, you, are, you ought to start the construction, and there's no approval for six months. So it, the interest is piling. So that's why people jump to and start constructing. Mm. So if there can be proper approval, the, the personnel doing the approvals come on time, do the approval, give the approval maybe within 30 days, and do the corrections where it's needed be, it will reduce. And so many people don't, they, they don't patronize experts. Okay, before we they go, go to, to patronizing Babela. experts, yeah. talking about approvals, aside, aside being slow, are these um, people trustworthy? Because we've had cases the government where, officials? Yes, we've had cases where you would hear, okay, if you go there and grease this palm and grease this palm, even a property that isn't supposed to be in that location would be approved. I mean, going even towards my area, you see a filling station in the midst of um, residential, residential properties. Area. So are these people trustworthy, aside being slow? Well, definitely, this is Nigeria. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I will not say they are not trustworthy, but I, I will say there's corruption everywhere. Every, every sector of this country, there's corruption. Because number one, um, I see no reason why an approval should take that long. And I see no reason why an individual that has been asked to come and supervise a project should ask for kickbacks. But it happens. But that is not enough reason for you not to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And but that, that's a disaster. That's what happened. Because once they give you money, you cannot say, you cannot stand on the truth. You will shift. And that's where the problem is. So there are, some of them are very, I've met officials of the government that's, that are truthful. They stand on what they want to do. After they've done it, you can say thank you. But they won't ask you. You can always say thank you. And I've met a very corrupt one. That number one, they are telling you, Oga, okay, they even want to collect money more than the government. The government is said telling you for this approval or for this thing, pay one million naira. They will be telling you their own PR is 1.5. Yes, it's 1.5 million naira. They will tell you to their face. I ah, want to collect money more than the government. You say, okay, if you cannot do it, leave it. So as someone that wants to get my approvals done, I will have no choice now to give them. So after giving them, they overlook some major thing that they ought to see. So eventually, the building collapsed. Mm. But I'm saying, despite it, even after me saying thank you, you should still do your job. Still do it. Look at the things that you're supposed to look at. Am I supposed to use 14 mm steel here? Yeah, and I'm using 10 mm. What's the concrete mix? Is it right? Is it wrong? You correct it so that it will be minimal. Then people, um, like I said, people don't want to pay. Professionals. They call Babalata, Babarisi to come and build for them. And before you know, that's Babari what you mean by not patronizing experts. Expert, yes. Babarisi is not an expert. It's just one bricklayer that has been doing bricklaying for 10 years. He has not gone to any formal school. He doesn't know anything. He just believes I'm a bricklayer, I can build. So you give the, you draw the drawing. Instead of giving the drawing to a Q, uh, an architect that will do a proper architectural drawing for you, you give it to Babarisi, you sit down with him, you use pencil to draw it. Babarisi, oh, I can do it like this now. Oh, yeah. You give Babarisi money. Before you know Babarisi, the building collapsed on him. Hmm. So we don't patronize experts because experts are not cheap and people don't want to pay. So what would you say to um, your customers or someone out there who wants to buy a home? How do they ensure that the home they're getting into is not a death trap? Okay, what we do in Revolution Plus, we go through integrity tests a lot. We have I have over 10, 15 engineers that man our sites. We have control policies, we have architects, we have QS. It's a proper property development company. So when you come, when you want to buy, like we have projects we are building everywhere. So we go, we make sure that our project goes through the process of approval with the government. It goes through it. It might take a while, but we make sure that we wait and they give us the approval, we move, we go ahead. So that's the way it works. So anybody, no, nobody does buy property or house from a Revolution Plus is a debt trap. It has never happened because we do the right thing. Mm, but I'm looking at it generally now, size Revolution Plus. So um, someone wants to get a property. Is there, are there steps you can recommend for them to take in order yes, to ensure yes, yes. that? Yes, yes. Now, number house... one, one of the major things that people are scared of is they, want, they don't want to lose money. Okay. Okay, let me start from that. You want to buy a property, you don't want to lose money. Apart from the housing, the house you want to buy collapsing. Another thing is making sure your money is safe. Okay. It might not collapse, but there can be issues later. Maybe with the, with the title, with the documentation that they will tell you, this person that sold to you is not the original owner. I've seen it happen several times on even a property, they mm -hmm. bit on the on land. So the man will lose it because whoever get the land, owns the land owns the house. The man will eventually lose the house and lose the land. So now, for basic step, once you have to want to buy a property in any state, let me use Lagos for instance, you will go through Alausa, there's a process for search. You get the document of our claim, for instance, let me say Revolution Plus, we want to buy property, we want to sell property in Lekki. I'm sure there's a document for it. You get the document, you take it to Alausa, you search it, you pay for the search. Mm -hmm. It comes out. You understand? You ask, you go to the uh, property also, ask around, how did they get this property? Who owns it? Are they the original owner? So you do your due diligence. Due diligence is very, very important. You get a lawyer 
for instance. Let your lawyer do the job for you. You go to everywhere, go to the company you want to buy the property from, go and search at Alausa, go to the project, ask certain questions, your approvals, okay, how is it, how did you get this, before you pay with your money. Mm. There are people who have done their due diligence, like you put it, and um, they still have their stories with um, people we call land grabbers, or they call them moneyless, right? So. I mean, you've spent six years in the business. I want to believe... I, I've not spent six years in the business. I've spent 18 years Revolution in the business. Plus. Don't forget, before I get to Revolution Plus, I was mm -hmm. a mortgage banker. Okay. So mortgages and real estate goes together. Okay. I had 13 years experience in the mortgage banking in sector and now where I years. developed houses. Okay for the bank. Okay, so basically it means that you've spent 18 years in the industry. In the industry, And yeah. definitely, this is not an assumption anymore, you must have encountered the land grabbers and the or people they call them on There's so many. So, so, what would you advise in that yeah, case? Well, because people do their due diligence, really. We've seen cases, we've seen stories, people we know, people who somebody we know knows, you know, and it still happens. So, okay, let me take it away from what the person should do. What is the situation uh, with land grabbers in Lagos State and maybe Ogun State, especially now? Well, for instance, if you want to buy property, that's why we have private developers like us, okay. Revolution Plus. Nobody goes through a money again. If it's I still at this point in time, you want to buy property, a house or land, you are still going to a money You are wasting your time and your money. We are the ones that face a money We get the land secured for you. All our estates are gated and fenced. You cannot enter anyhow. So if you go to a money layer, there's almost 100% that you will lose your money. If you don't lose the money, when you want to do your fencing, they will come. Mm -hmm. When you want to do your roofing, they will come. Oh, so we come. Oh, plastering, they will come. So by the time you put all those ones together, the stress is too much. You just leave the land and run away. Mm -hmm. So what people do now, they call Revolution Plus. I want to buy a property. We go through there. We show them the list catalog of all our estates they choose from. They can be rest assured that from such a state, there won't be a money there, there's no land grabber. So if you are still experiencing land grabber and you are listening to me, you are going through the wrong channel. Mm -hmm. What Lagos State government has done with land grabber, there's a, in the Ministry of Justice in Lagos State, there's a department for land grabber. There's a section that they created for land grabber cases. So if you report, maybe you buy land from a money there and you're having issues, you go there, you report, they take it off for you. Okay. But why go do that stress? Why you can go to developers that will sort out everything for you once and for all? Okay, let's talk about our new reality, the new normal, at the pandemic, COVID-19. How would you say it has affected the real estate? Or would you categorize real estate as that sector that wasn't affected? Real estate is the sector that benefited most mm. in the COVID-19 era. Quote me, quote me anywhere. How so? Well, because number one, they say stay in your house, leave your home, don't go anywhere. If you don't have a house, you will sleep on the streets. So immediately the lockdown got lifted a bit. People started investing in real estate. Revolution Plus has benefited so much during this COVID mm -hmm. than any other time this year. Mm. COVID started around March, April. What the sales we have made around March, April from May till now is more than what we've done throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So because number one, everybody wants to go home now, especially our brothers and sisters in diaspora. Mm -hmm. They all want to come back home. So what they've been able to do is to invest back home through Revolution Plus. And it's not a story of even in this sector, in this sector, because I'm a member of Redan, Real Estate Development Association of Nigeria. So I know what's going on with my friends and my colleagues in the industry. Mm -hmm. COVID has favored real estate more than any other sector. It has favored agriculture too. Mm -hmm. So it's one place because everybody wants to live in a house. The government is saying stay at home. So if you don't have a house, so it's an eye opener for everybody. I, I must have a house. So immediately after the lockdown, we start publicizing. People started coming. They want a house. They want a land. They are so it has been good. Okay. I wouldn't say the only thing is that people can't go out. The, the risk is high. Mm. But concerning investment in real estate. People are investing more now. Mm, but some are of the opinion that the idea of working from home may shift the uh, um, uh, value from the choice, the properties we regard as choice properties now, where you have the the companies and, commercial, all, properties. and commercial properties and, and move it away to 
um, the, the, the residential properties? Do you see that happening or is it happening already? It's not happening per se okay. right now. Most companies now, so many of them are still working from home, their staffs. Mm -hmm. But eventually, COVID, maybe I see it going maybe after a year. They all go back to their properties. And it, has, it might have affected the commercial properties a bit, but it has given a plus to residential properties. Okay. Residential properties are doing so well. I know the com most of the commercial properties are under lock and keys now. Mm -hmm. Restaurants, hotels, um, offices. So it, it might be a true, but it won't be forever. And don't forget, properties and investment is, is for life. So if the property is not in you sell it to somebody, another person that can use it, and it's becoming usable. Mm. So, so how, how would you rate, or what would you say would be the real estate market outlook going forward? OK, let me say in the next three years or four years, I see it, it has peaked. Real estate market right now in, in Nigeria, for instance, as a case study, has peaked, has gone up better than before mm -hmm. because of COVID. Everybody now have this enlightenment that they want to live in here. They want to have a house of their own. I'm talking of residential property now. Okay. So another thing, one major thing that real estate um, development has faced over the years is funding. And we are still facing it. You asked me a question, how do we fund Revolution Plus? Revolution Plus have been funded through my very minute um, bank finance. But most of the projects we do have been OPM, other people's money. We have investors give money and we invest the get returns. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've been doing. But we, I, I make sure that I don't take loan from banks because an, as an ex-banker, I'm risk averse. I'm very, very careful taking, taking, um, taking loan because I've learned over the years that the loans you take, if you're not careful, we are in your business mm. from okay. the banks. Definitely, there are people who look up to you. What advice would you give them? The focus, I'm a very focused person. I work extra hard. Mm -hmm. I'm a very focused person, then I love God. You be here, I'll be saying grace, grace. But I have so much grace and be focused. Don't be distracted because distraction is much everywhere. We started Revolution Plus from a shop, very small office at maybe very, very small. But now we have offices everywhere, owned by us. So without focus, we cannot achieve all this. So we focus be trustworthy. And one thing that has worked for us also is trustworthiness. Integrity. Integrity has worked for us. Okay. We have challenges in